everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how I've made these really pretty cards using the brand new Nova markers. Now these are alcohol based markers that I've received from Trimcraft and yeah they've been really really nice to use. Now what I'm going to be doing is showing you two ways to use your markers. So there's this easy way which is using what I call the one marker blend. That's this one here. So there's only one, two, three, four, five on that one as well, six different markers used to create this. So this here is all using the same blue marker. But it's just a very, very easy technique. And I think if you're starting off with markers, using alcohol markers, this is the best way to start off. And then this one here is using more different colors. So I've used lighter blues, medium blues, dark blues for the basket and so on, you know, with the card there. So I'm gonna show you both techniques because you start off with that one and then you just introduce more color to get this style. Both I love equally, so depending on whether you're, you know, need to do things quickly, then definitely this way. But if you've got more time to sit down and relax and colour, then this is a nice one to try. So let's talk about the markers. These are a brand new range for Trimcraft. So this is Nova. Now there are 15 products within the range. So you've also got watercolour markers, which I will share in a different tutorial. And there are metallic markers as well. So you get... There are nine within the these, this marker pack range, and I've got six of them. So I'm missing the greens, the neutrals, and the brights. So I'm gonna be getting them because the neutrals appeal to me because that's your skin tones, and the greens, I use green with everything. Fortunately, there was one green that I've been able to use, which is this one here, which is in the pastels, which I've used to create the, the color there for the leaves. So you get six in a pack, but there's also packs of 24, they're alcohol based. These have a high quality fiber Japanese nib and you've got your fine and then your broad or chisel. And yeah, on the back tells you the colors that you have there. Quick dry ink, acid free, low odor and non-toxic. And they are low odor because I compared them to some of my other marker pens and these are considerably lower odor. So if that's something that you don't like, then already these are, from all of the markers I've got, these ones do have the lowest odor. Okay, so let's just have a little look quickly and then I'm gonna get straight into coloring because I think it's best to see them actually working. I won't keep them in this anymore because I have mine all kind of um, stored differently. But if you are someone that does like to keep them in the packets, that's nice that on the side they do have it all listed there for you. So everything has a code and you've got there, it easily tells you the fine end, there we go, fine. And you do have that gray bit that kind of dips down so it is quite easy to distinguish and I have been using it. And then here you just can see there, Nova Designer Markers and then it says there your broad end. And you've got a little kind of detail there as well. But yeah, and the colors are pretty good as well. That was one thing I did notice, they do yeah, they come out pretty much the colour that they, they say they are. There's a few that maybe, but it is always hard to get that true colour to a plastic. You know, something on paper to look like a plastic is, is difficult anyway. So you can see there, let's just take that end off as well and that one. And they do pull off really nicely. They do click in, but I've got some pens. I've literally had to, again, they're cheap and nasty ones and I don't really use them anymore. But I'm like this. And I remember I took the lid off of one once and the nib just went flying out. And you also get drips as well from some of the cheaper alcohol markers. So when you pull the lid off, you get little, little bits of the, you know, the actual ink itself, like dripping. And I've had that drip onto my projects before and it's ruined it. So again, you, you know, they're the kind of things that, that you do see a difference in when you do buy cheaper markers to, you know, not more expensive because these are really competitive prices as well. So all the links to everything will be shared below. So I'm gonna just get every single one out because like I said, I'm not gonna keep the packaging anymore. Okay, so that's all the markers. So now I want to get some images stamped. So I've already put my stamps on here. I'm stamping the same image again. So this is the Daisy May and this is the Daffodil Basket set. It's beautiful. I've been wanting to use it for a while and I thought, right, I'm going to sit down and enjoy. I've had a movie on and yeah, just been playing around with these. It's been really nice. So I am using, I'm really enjoying this, this um, ink here. This is the Nouveau Hybrid and it's pretty much the one I'm going to all the time. If you are using alcohol markers, also Memento is really good, but this one I'm just grabbing all the time now because it works for watercolor and for alcohol. You just don't have to think about it, it's great. And eventually I think when the others run out, this will be the one that I have all the time. So I have already loaded up, I just have to push that away a bit, there we go. So I've already loaded up the, the daffodil basket and the extra daffodil there. I'm also gonna add the 
tag so I kept doing that separately but we'll pop that on there as well because I will need to stamp it eventually so I'm just going to ink this all up and stamp it onto my this is a smooth 300 GSM cardstock it's alcohol friendly or alcohol marker friendly so you do want to make sure that you've got something that can obviously handle the alcohol markers they do bleed through but that's you know all alcohol markers do that even the best ones on the market it's not a bad thing it's you know it does happen so just going to stamp that. I think I need to do that obviously again. Okay, I've just come in a little bit closer. So first of all, I'm just going to talk you through the really simple way of doing the one marker blend. So I'm just going to pull out this orange here. So this is the R07. I'm just going to draw a square up here just so you can get an idea. Okay, actually I'm going to use the thicker end for this just to colour it in. So I'm just going to colour in this whole square. Okay, so I've just coloured that there and already where I've gone heavier with the colour here, can you see it's darker than this is lighter? So that's because there's more layers have gone over that section to create a darker shade. So if you just keep that in mind and then carry on colouring over that, so I'm just going to colour more in this corner here. If you kind of go around on like an angle like that, just kind of... And then kind of let it dry in between the layers just so that then when you place it down again it can get even darker but you can keep adding to this obviously you're going to really saturate the paper and already you can see there it's bleeding through so make sure you've got something that's going to create you know protect your table underneath but this is what i mean by create by this one marker shading or whatever it is blending you want you know it's it's really really good especially if you're just starting out now if i go all over that again Obviously I've made now that darker, but can you still see that this is still darker? And it will work for any pen that you use, any marker that you use. So again, I can just go in here and just really make that dark, right in the corner there. But I haven't really done anything else here. Okay, and that's it, that's all that's to it. So the darker areas, you just keep adding more layers and don't even touch the initial colour that you kind of lay down unless you do want to blend it a little bit better. So that's it, I, you know, hopefully I've explained it <laughs> easy enough. I'm now going to just basically do that on this here. So I kind of want to keep the same colours but I think I am going to do, let's do a different blue on the basket to start with. I think it might have been that one that I used. No, that was turquoise. No, we're going to go with that one. So Parts of this video I'm going to put on high speed because you don't need to watch me colouring the same colour constantly. But what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to is I'm going to colour this whole basket and try and just keep one layer. So try not go over too many areas. So it might be worthwhile to cover the larger areas first of all with your broad tip. So I'm just going right over everything. Try not to really go over because I want this to, parts of this, isn't, I'm never going to colour over again, so probably like this middle section, I'm not going to colour over that again. But parts of the kind of stand here at the bottom, these kind of areas are going to become very, very dark, because they're going to, you know, if you think about it, you've got all the flowers over there, um, which were going to create a shade. And also, this is almost underneath the basket, so it's going to be very, very dark. So I'm just kind of covering like so. Okay, do a little bit on there. Again, I'm not really going to touch that anymore. It'd be just the, the outer part of the handle. So now I'm going to go in and tidy this all up, go right up to the edges, and then I'll come back and we'll start going over it a bit more. Okay, so that's just laying down one layer really, but now you can start going over all the areas where you would imagine there to be more of a shadow. So if you think all these flowers are, over, are overflowing this basket, so all underneath them is going to be dark. So you just start going over with exactly the same colour right around them. So I'm just going around all of them, trying to stay within the lines. And then all of that I'm going to cover all the same. All of this will be very dark, all these tiny little areas just cover. And then down here, 
I'm going to really go nice and dark again and I'm going to keep going over it so I'm going to keep this light on the, the front here but I'm going to go just all around this part here. If you put some little kind of curves in the colour as well that will give it more of an authentic look of you know like the sun coming down on parts of it. Like here this would be really dark and then all around here Okay, so now I'm really pleased with how that's coming together, but I don't like where I've got little patchy bits here, so I am just going to go over it again, just to kind of blend that all in. But then I'm going to go over, I know I've gone over that leaf now, I'll have to sort that out in a minute, but now I'm going to go over it again, even darker around here. And each time you keep going over the darker sections, it will make this look like it's lighter. And if you do a few like little flicks, just to kind of get a little bit of a blend, it will all settle like so. Once I start adding more colour to it, I can go back into that. But that's just the basics of it. But it's really just layering up the same colour will create that, that depth for you and actually make it look like you've used more than just one colour marker. So that's your easiest way to do that. So I'm going to leave that like that for now. But what I am going to do is introduce some other blue tones into it later to show you how you can then kind of, you know, do more colours with it. So now I'm going to bring in the green. I do only have that one for the moment. So the green I'm using is the G35 from the pastels. So I'm now going to do exactly the same. So I'm just going to go over everything once. Okay, so I've just gone over that once. Now I'm going to go over and I need to kind of go over it quite a bit there because where the blues overlap, you can see that more than the, it's darker than the green. But again, just where you've got it, where it's kind of meeting with the flowers and stuff, it's going to be very dark in those areas. So I'm just focusing on the, the centre really of everything. And then just kind of flick out a little bit again on this one here. But the nice thing is, is you can just keep going into it as many times as you like. You know, do let it dry a little bit in between. It would just be a lot easier because you might get a little bit of a bleed just where there's a lot of the ink down because it will still be wet. So, and then I'm just going to come out a bit darker on this side here. But again, I hope this is picking up. Can you just see, look, the two different shades there, but just from one marker. But again, if you don't like that line, just flick on areas just to get it kind of a bit more of a neater blend. Okay, so again, I'm just going to leave the green there for the moment. Then I'm going to come in with my yellow. So I'm going to go for, the, I think it was that one there I used, yeah. So this is the Y00. And I'm going to do these two here. Now this one is a decoupage one, so you would die cut this again and then it goes on top of that. So if you're not using that, then obviously you want to make sure this looks really nice, but I'm just going to do a little bit of this. Just I'm not going to do the center because this one's going to go over the top. So this one I'll do properly and then that will stick over there. So again, just adding one layer down. So try not to overlap the color too much. Okay, and then exactly the same again, just go back in to those, always like kind of work around the inside, so if it's a flower and stuff, that's always where it's going to generally be darker. And then just start building that up. Again, I don't really need to worry about that one, it's this one here. Okay, I'll go back into that again. Now I'm going to do the same with this one here. I think I'm going to go a bit red with these ones. So let's try the, oh yeah, that's a lovely red. But it might be a bit too dark to, let's also try this one. Oh yeah, I'm going to go for that one. Okay, so I'm going to do exactly the same with these. Again, just applying kind of one layer. Don't overlap too much. Okay, and then at the bottom, these are tulips here. So at the very bottom of the tulip, I'm just going in with that red again. I'm just flicking it out. And then here, you just again focus on all these bits together here. You know, use pictures as well as a reference, because they do help a lot. You can see there, and again, just flick that colour out a little bit. 
You can see there just how dark I've really got that. Okay, so I'm really pleased with this. Next, I just want to add a bit of an orange in the center of those daffodils. So this here is the RY15. Okay, so that is how you can get a blend of different colors using one color marker. All right, you can really notice it on the blue there. Now, if you wanna then start to make things look even lighter, you apply darker color. So for example, to make this basket look actually much, much lighter than it is, I wanna bring in some darker blues. So I used the, the B07, so I'm gonna bring in this B19. And you can see there just how dark that is. But if you go very fine, if you go very thin, just around little areas where again, you would know a shadow would form, it will start to make this color here look much, much lighter. So. Okay, then what you can do is go back in with the original colour, so whatever colour you lay down and go back over and literally colour right over and it will almost start to bleed them together. So you just get a bit of a nicer blend again if you don't want that harsh finish. But sometimes the harsh finish does look good as well, so you don't want to always get rid of it completely. Okay, but you see now how this looks much, much lighter than it did before. It actually looked quite dark because it was against its same kind of tone, whereas now we've started to bring in these darker colours, it really lifts this to a much, much lighter colour. So I'm really happy with the basket now. I'm going to keep that as it is. So I got that look there by just using two colours. So that was the B19 and the B7. Then I want to start making these reds look even brighter. So there are some darker reds here. So we've got the R20 and the R19. So I'm just gonna check. What I'll probably do is lay down the R19 first. This is a little bit more of a, yeah, and then I might come in with that one after. So just down the bottom here again, just go over really where you were before and then just kind of little bits here just to make the rest pop right at the bottom there of the tulip. And can you see by adding that dark, it makes this look so much lighter. Everything there just starts to really lift and you get this highlighted effect. Okay, so again, I don't, I don't think I wanna do too much. Now, if you, again, if you're not happy with the, maybe a line, go in with the original color that you lay down. So this is when you just need to start remembering the markers. And you just kind of will remove any harsh lines, like so. And then, with this one, I'm not going to do too much with the real dark colour. All I'm going to do is almost just do like just a little line, just at the very bottom there. It's almost, you know, you're creating like a black, it's so, so dark down there. I might do it really dark in the centre here, actually. Love it. I think that looks really, really nice. Then I need to sort out the yellow. Well, not sort the yellow out. The yellow is lovely as it is, but if you do again want to go in with a much, much darker yellow. Now, I haven't got anything darker than that one. So what you can do is actually come in with an orange because orange and yellow obviously work really well together. And I don't want to go in too dark. So let's try... I don't want to do the same orange that's in the middle there. So I'm going to see what this one is. Yeah, this one's fine. So this is the... Are, no, this is the YR18, and I'm actually going to do a very, very little kind of ring around the centre of the daffodil. And you get this um, effect on daffodils anyway, but like so. Okay. Now, flick out just a couple little bits, okay, like that. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with the original yellow and maybe a darker one actually. So I've got Y00, Y02. Yeah, I think that will work. So I'm actually gonna lay down the darker one first and go back over the orange. 
and you you almost then they're like turning into a bit of a watercolor because you're saturating it so much that it starts to bleed into one another it won't damage your nibs but it's a way of blending two colors I like that and then again I'm going to go over it with the yellow the original yellow and then just kind of dot in the orange there and they will keep reacting they will keep working for a while after as well and then what you can do is bring in another yellow this is when I end up just playing around in the end but I'm not touching the very outer part I want to keep that at its lightest Okay, remember this one is going to go on top of this, that's why I'm not really doing much with it. Now I did just bring in a green from one of my other branded markers. You can mix markers perfectly fine, there's no problem doing that at all. But I just wanted to show you how it would look, obviously with the green added in it as well. I'll definitely be getting the, uh, the greens from this range. I'm just going back over everything with that original green that I laid down at the beginning. It just helps blend everything back out. And there you go, I think I might do some more of the darker bits around this um, part there. But I think it just, I, re I do, I've, it's really funny, I've always been so into my watercolour, but since being introduced to alcohol markers, I'm very new to this, it's not something I've been doing for a long, long time, but I'm really, like, really enjoying it. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know what it is about them, they're just lots and lots of fun to use. I think that's a little bit better there. Just very faint. Again, always coming in with the original blue that you laid down, or whatever colour it is. It will just help create that depth. So you have to also remember when to stop because you can overdo it with them. So I think I'm going to stop now because I don't want to go too much. I want to get this stuck on here so I can see what it looks like. Now with this little tag here, you get a couple of little sentiments from the collection. You get thank you and with love. I'm going to use thank you again because I'm just trying to just build up a few thank you cards. And again, I got the, the tag here that's just using one colour. I went around the edges loads of times but didn't go over the, the centre too much. But again, I'll show you how you can then lift that. So I'm using, that was the WG... Zero, zero, yeah, so again, I'm going to just use the chisel end there just to cover that area. And then just go around all this. Okay, so there it is, just using this RV11 and the WG00, okay, and you just again keep going over it to build up that colour. But then I'm going to introduce this darker pink here, still just on this, the knot really of this bow, because that's what would be darkest. And then come back in again. So, and then with this one here, you can actually add greys. So that's actually quite a nice grey. So you just go around here and the grey is a good one to blend but add a darker shade. So for example if I just go around this like so and then come back in with the original going over that grey. Okay you can see there now I've created a real nice dark frame but it all kind of blends in together. I can just go around that a bit more, start coming in further into the actual image. But each time I'm just coming back in with that one again, just slightly overlapping it, only a little bit. And just put a few flecks through just to kind of help everything out. There we go. I think that will do. So that's going to be my label. I'm going to get this all die cut now. Okay, so I have die cut them all, I've stuck that on there. I've also cut the centre out there, you can see this part, because um, the die doesn't, it leaves that white, so I just wanted to remove that. I've put some foam tabs on the back, so now I'm going to stick everything down. So it's a 6 by 6 card blank, I've got it top folding orientation, because I quite like that style. And then I have done these mats and layers, so I have the largest one, which is 5 and 3 quarters squared, and then the pattern is five and a half squared. So I'm just going to stick them all down. Okay, then I've got a strip of this thick linen and then this is like a, a hessian and um, I'm going to stick this onto the top 
just running some hot glue through that center strip. I will end up trimming this down a little bit more as well. And then I'm not going to trim that end, but I want to have a similar kind of overhang on this side because I'm going to fray it. I've just roughed up all the edges there and then I'm just going to take off my phone tabs. And then I'm just going to sit that one over the top. I think that looks so pretty. It really does look quite 3D actually. That blue is really kind of lifted, that darker blue that I added. And then I am going to bring in some sequins and I just added three on the top there and got two on the bottom. So I'm just going to stick some of those down. Okay, so there is the finished card. I think it looks really, really nice. I do love the real dark blue parts here because it just makes the rest of it really, really pop. And uh, yeah, really pleased. So there is the one where you just use the one marker and just layer it up. Really love that. It's got a much, much more subtle kind of look to it, but that's because of the colors that I chose. So if you went for a much darker color, then you would probably get something similar to this. And then that's the same again, but using different colors. I think the yellows were pretty much the same um, but obviously with this one I have brought in that extra green and I just really love them. I like that I've got the texture here and I've got the obviously the sequins there so we've got a little bit of just a little bit of shine catching but with regards to the markers yep yeah, I really do rate them for my level of colouring I think they work really well and um, yeah they're certainly going to be one that I will yeah pull out and you will see me using a lot more so thank you Trimcraft as always you spoil us <laughs> um, I hope you liked the tutorial please leave me a thumbs up if you did and pop any questions that you might have as well in the description in the comment boxes below I will have all links to everything including the stamps papers all that kind of stuff will be linked in the description box and until next time I'll see you soon bye